Do you want to talk with Tam? 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 Talk with Tam. Talk with Tam. Talk with Tam. Talk with Tam. Say, do you want to talk with Tam? Say, do you want to talk with Tam? Do you want to talk with Tam? Do you want to talk with Tam? Talk with Tam. Talk with Tam. Talk with Tam. Talk with Tam, everybody. Today is Tuesday, February the 1st, 2022. And you are tuned in to your Talk with Tam YouTube channel. I got to give a shout out to my 71 subscribers. I have to give a shout out to you, my viewers. I have to give a shout out to my empowerment partners and all those who support Temple of Praise Ministries. I really mean that. I do have a brief program announcements. Uh, applications for Top Junior Executive. The program is open now. It launched today. Yay! Uh, and you can go on the website. I've been talking about it and I'm going to continue to talk about it, uh, but I won't today. <laughs> also, I am the Seekers. Oh, man. And I don't know what to call it, the Seekers Project, maybe. I am so encouraged by the response from, from my face mess community. <laughs> but I'm still compelled to push studying. It's more. There's more out there that needs to get into the habit of the word. The fast is over with, y'all. <laughs> and I did not in have any, I did not have any intent to talk about this today, Tuesday. Because it really, the fast didn't merge with the topic. So I thought. But I need you uh, to remember tonight's topic, which is the purpose of the pit is to prepare you for the promise. I can't find my glasses, y'all. Because uh, once I, I, I do my testimony about the fast, uh, we should... Um, see how uh, my fast kind of merged into today's topic. I ain't got my glasses, y'all, so bear with me. Briefly about the fast. My fast. This was the first time I have, have uh, fasted under a pastor for years. But please don't think this was not the first time on the, the I fasted. Please don't. Uh, but when I say underneath a pastor, I mean underneath his pastoral directions and his instructions. So I read those things and I said, I'm in 100%. And in this fast, my fast, I desire to have I, I had a desire to have an intimacy with God. Like a hand in a glove, I asked for it. Throughout the fasting days, I got delivered from that coffee demon, y'all. And I uh, became able to dis discipline my belly since the fast. I've only had one Pepsi, and the fast was over with last Wednesday. I've only had one Pepsi. Believe it or not, y'all ain't gonna believe this. I only have drank one pot of coffee all this time. And I have learned how to creatively substitute salad for bread. And one day I even substituted my breakfast, I mean salad for my breakfast. I received miracles during the fast. I did. One, I will always cherish as a mother. Uh, I was noticing other things about myself and my relationship with God. 
I had three different incidents since coming off the fast. I spoke things, and each individual was shocked that I had spoke an intimate detail. And, and one of them first just denied it. But then hours, I said hours later, came back to thank me that God had showed them what I had said. Uh, people that know me, they know I've always been able to see spirits, but never the spirit of God. Each time they gave that report that I confirmed something, uh, I glorify God, not myself. But here's the connection to the talk with Tim, all right? The purpose, remember that, the purpose of the pit is to prepare you for the promise or your vision. This topic, this topic was posted last Tuesday. Y'all know how I roll out. Well, the face mask community do. Last week, last week, the spirit led me to contact my church about a Sunday school book. I received it this Saturday. And just prepared myself uh, for the next day's lesson, which was Sunday. But today, today, I was led to study on my break. Not Wednesday. Oh, come on here. If I had studied Wednesday, I would not have this testimony. So I picked up the Sunday school lesson and turned to this week's lesson. And the topic is propelled into promise. I dropped my head in humility and reference God. Just the, the title impacted me. But, but, but when I began to study that intimacy I wanted with God became a reality. Because of the context of the lesson. And I'm going to just give you three quick Sunday school points. And we're moving on because I'm losing time. The desert uh, they were talking about. And I call it the pit. Functions as a testing and preparation ground. Hear me and hear me well. The wilderness. The pit experience. Will humble you. And prove to you what is actually within the state of your heart. The last point, the lesson made that was in context to today's lesson here is that Jesus was led by the spirit into the wilderness. He was led, and I'm going to say, into a pit. And when the spirit leads us, if we continue to trust God, the book says, the lesson says, we will come out the wilderness. And I'm going to say again, the pit. You know, y'all ain't got to feel me on this, and I'm okay with that. But my in intimacy with God is real, and it's sincere. It produces fruit. One last thing, because I'm going to have to probably cut this short today. Buster comes in the room while I'm writing this. While I'm writing this, plugging this piece in. He said, Mama, you know that song you were singing in the car? God said he would be with me. <laughs> he said, Mama, no joke. That was the title of the lesson in his Bible reading today. So I need to admonish you, and, and, and that's why I'm not even worried about the time and cutting into the next part of this. When you fast, go in 100%. And you will get results during and after the fast. The sacrifice is worth the reward. The sacrifice is worth the fruit. Amen. Amen. I, I could close it down right now, but I got to go into my little lesson. The purpose of a pit is to prepare you for the what? Promise. When we are confident in what God has spoken to us through our visions, dreams, or that still voice, even if we don't know how, we do know what we saw 
or what God has said. But as we know, we should not be afraid because God did not give us a spirit of fear. But when in that vision, the dream, the word of, from God comes a trial, not even related to your assignment, you, your trials, they usually relate to relationships, especially those people. How about this? We see part of that vision. Those trials come with the people who we actually intended to bless. Because it doesn't happen in their time, then they turn on you. They flip on you. They forsake you. They begin to mock you. And some will sabotage, sabotage your, your efforts. Because you are a willing worker and not willing to stop into the grave, as my auntie Sweet Thing would say. These people are, unfortunately, these people we're talking about, unfortunately, or typically family. You know it was uh, Cain who slew Abel. Why? Because he was jealous. You know it was Jacob who stole the birthright of his brother Esau. Why? Because he was jealous. Joseph, you know it was his brothers who threw him in the pit. Why? Because they were jealous. Besides Abel, how do you think Esau and Joseph felt? Unloved? Broken? I'm going to say this and move on. There is a difference between family and relatives. What's the difference? There are some things family just ain't going to do, nor will they go against, nor will they do. They won't go against you no matter how mad they are with you, family. But them relatives, they are, they are run on you. <laughs> but God allows those people to reveal, uh, he allows those people to be revealed to us before the promise. That is the only advantage sometime in the disadvantage of the breakup of the relationships. See, when people, when we're talking about relatives, co-workers, neighbors, how about this, your enemies, when they, are, when they purposefully plot and they are, I say it, successful, you praise God in the pit. You praise him in the pit. In the pit, you will find out exactly where your relationship stands with people. How about this? In your relationship, how it stands with God. When you are in the pit, look to the hills will come with your help so you can see who will reach out and help you. Uh, and those that can't help you, they're going to throw you down some bread. Something to comfort you. And then when you're in the pit, you're going to see who pointed and left. I believe the only reason Joseph did not lose his mind in the pit is because of his relationship with God. I believe the only reason Joseph did not seek revenge when he could is because of his relationship with God. Jealous people are dangerous people. Again, the topic, the purpose of the pit is to prepare you for the promise. Genesis 37, 4 and 5. And when the brethren saw that their father loved him, meaning Joseph, than all his brethren, they hated him and could not speak peaceably unto him. Love is visible even when it's unspoken. Jealousy conceived into sin in the form of hatred. And when a person hates you, they never have anything good to say about you. You could have saved them, gave them a heads up. They will accept it and give you a half thank you. 
But as soon as you turn your back, they could not even, if they had 10,000 tongues, speak peaceably about you. The sad thing about it all is you have been nothing but kind to them. I will say this and move on. You can smile right in someone's face and have a jealous heart. You can smile right in someone's face and have hatred in your heart. And in Joseph's case, they hated him for what God showed him. If we want to keep it real, the person they hate is God. Oh boy, I'm going to get some calls on that one. Why? Because of what he did, what God did for others and not yet for themselves. That's why folks hate God and they won't say it. They'll hate that person. They'll hate that person. But that, that hate really, really is at God. Because don't person, they, they didn't do that. God did that for them. But as my fuller gospel pastor would say, this one, this one I'm going to give you, this one for free. If you praise God for what others have, if you can praise God eating Roman noodles, if you can praise God in the pit, if you can praise God when you lied on, cheated, talked about, mistreated, then you are in the right position while you're in the pit. It's temporary anyway. See, I'm off my notes. I'm off my notes, but 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 back to my notes. They hated Joseph. They hated him because of his dream. Going on, and Joseph dreamed a dream and told his brethren, and they hated him what? Yet the more. They already hated him. But because God is steady downloading the promise, and he is speaking those spiritual things, those heavenly things, God blesses him to see, check this, they hated him even the more. Genesis 37 8. And when his brethren said to him, Shalt thou indeed reign over us, or shalt thou indeed have uh, dominion over us? They hated him, yet the more for his dreams and for his words. It's about the position. Will he lead them? Have authority to tell them what to do. Why can't people follow? who God chooses to lead. I'll say that again. Why can't people follow who God chooses to lead? Especially when they're producing fruit. But know this, people will throw you in a pit hating on you just because of your words of faith and because of your words of wisdom. This is one thing I learned as an interim pastor in 2011. And I'm going to do this real quick. And I do mean quick. Uh, don't get offended when people do not take your advice. Nor when they give you a headache. It is not of God. You or the spiritual advisor. And the reason why you are getting, uh, don't get offended when, uh, or uh, you getting a headache is because you're going over and over. You, you ain't just saying what they want, want to hear. And it's frustrating you. <laughs> but the whole thing that blew my mind about preachers is when uh, they fought Joseph. They fought Joseph. Uh, uh, they they always say you should keep it to yourself when the scripture tells me to speak those things. Call it into existence. To keep it alive. I believe this too. If God has trusted you with what you see, he trusts you to obey. He trusts you to speak as the spirit 
gives utterance. <laughs> and sometimes you will keep silent. But, uh -uh. but when you speak, people get jealous because all they hear is you boasting. And uh, boasting about what you're going to do. But no, your boasting is in, is in the Lord. You are glorifying God with your words. And they hate you for it. They hate you because when you talk about that thing, the glory of the Lord shines through you. They hate you because of the God that shines through you. Genesis 37 and 11. Joseph told his brothers, Joseph told his dream again. Or as Bishop would say, he opened up his big mouth again, talking too much. Ain't I heard that one a lot. And his brethren envied him, but his father observed the saying. Jealousy conceived hate. Hate conceived envy. Think about that. Jealousy conceived hate. Hate conceived envy. When you let the sun go down on your wrath, it has no other recourse but sin. Genesis 30, 37 and 18. And when they saw him afar him afar off, even before he came near unto them, they conspired again to him to slay him. I'm sorry, I don't have my glasses. Once they saw him that envied him, uh, the ones that would not allow uh, anyone to speak peaceably about him. When they saw him, uh, I believe that Joseph wouldn't, didn't think that his brothers were standing around plotting to kill him. Because these were his family. Ain't no such thing nowadays as blood is thicker than water. But I'm here to tell you this. The blood of Jesus is the thickest blood you can have in his brothers mocked his gift from God. You all need to read the whole story in context. Calling him the dreamer. And now the works of the flesh are manifested here in Genesis 37 and 20. Come now, therefore, and let us slay him and cast him into some pit. And we will say some evil beasts have devoured him. And we shall see that we shall see what will become of his dreams. But there was one, one brother, Reuben, like that sandwich. Ain't that just bad? <laughs> he was the only one who loved his brother enough not to go along with the majority. But hear me and hear me well. Don't be foolish and go with your buddies, your group. If they're not leading you towards God, they're leading you the wrong way. If they're not leading you towards righteousness, they're leading you the wrong way. Now, Reuben didn't love him enough not to stand up for his brother, considering he was the oldest. But no, that joker is the one who said, put him in a pit. And guess what? 37, 23, and 24. It came to pass. When Joseph was come unto his brothers, that they stripped the Joseph out of his coat, his coat of many colors. And they took him and cast him into the pit, and the pit was empty, empty. There was no water in it. And they sat down to eat bread. I'm going to say this, and this is not a cuss word. Ain't that a bite? <laughs> they bit off bread. While their brothers, while their brother screamed for his life in the pit. See, this is what I know. The Bible does not describe the way Joseph reacted, but I believe he snapped. If anything, if he's anything like the half saints, I mean, half of the saints, and I ain't going to say my church because I ain't been there that long, but after realizing that they were not going to get him out, once he realized this was not a bad joke, 
he cussed them out in the pit. If he was like anything like Job, he cursed the day he was born. I guess what actually happened with Joseph did was orated. <laughs> but I believe this. I do believe this. For what the promise was, for what he needed for that promise, prepared him in the pit. I believe before he pulled out, he got pulled out the pit and sold, he began to praise God. I believe after the pit, after being sold, then to be persecuted, I mean, per, I mean, uh, yeah, for, for about sex, he praised God. I am fool enough to believe that Joseph was locked up. He helped out, helped others, and those people even forgotten about him. I still believe he praised God because I don't believe Joseph flesh was happy about those discomforts. I do believe even when his spirit was grim, he had enough in him to praise God. Why? Why can I say this? Because in every pit stop he made, the scripture always came back and said, God was with him. God gave him favor. In his pit, in the persecution, in jail. God will still give you favor. Moving on quickly. So my talk with Tim viewers, as we know how the story ends, his dream came true. Joseph was the governor of Egypt, the highest ranking after Pharaoh. And we're moving on to Genesis 50, 15 and 21. And when Joseph's brethren saw that their father was dead, they said, Joseph will pre-adventure hate us and will certainly requit us all the evil which he, which we did unto him. And they sent a messenger unto Joseph saying, thy father did command before he died saying, so tell, he say unto Joseph, forgive, I pray thee now, the trespass of my brethren and the sin, for they did unto the evil. And now we pray, forgive the trespass of the servants, the God of thy father. And Joseph wept when they apologized. And his brothers also went and fell down before his face. And they said, behold, we be thy servants. And here it go. Listen, listen. And Joseph said unto them, fear not. For am I in the place of God? But as for you, you jokers, ye thought evil against me, but God meant it unto good to bring to pass as it is this day to save much people alive. Now therefore, fear not. How about this? This is my boy, Joseph. I will nourish you and your little ones. And he comforted them and spake kindly unto him. <laughs> when Joseph had the opportunity to go before God and to get his hands dirty, he didn't. He did what was right before by the people in the eyes of God. Talk with town viewers. When you are in the pit, I know it don't feel good when you're in it. But if you praise God through it, the pit will prepare you for your promise. Don't worry about how you got in there and those negative things that got you into the pit. Just focus on that promise. It is unproductive. Only be strong and very courageous when you are going from pit stop to pit stop. Focus on the dream. Focus on the vision. Focus on the words God spoke to you. Hold on fast to that 
in which God has showed you and it is promised to come to pass. There's a purpose for the pit. It was to prepare you for the promise. Amen. Amen, everybody. I want you all to have a good week. Don't forget to study. Uh, until next Tuesday. Do you want to talk with Tam? 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 Talk with Tam. Talk with Tam. Talk with Tam. Talk with Tam. Say, do you want to talk with Tam? Say, do you want to talk with Tam? Do you want to talk with Tam? Do you want to talk with Tam? Talk with Tam. Talk with Tam. Talk with Tam. Talk with Tam, everybody, until next Tuesday.